welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to check out DaVinci Resolve 18. This is the latest version of my favourite free video editor. So let's go and take a closer look. DaVinci Resolve is published by Blackmagic Design who manufacture a large range of professional video products that include cameras and switches and recorders. And indeed, I record a lot of my own videos on Blackmagic hardware. The fact that Blackmagic Design is primarily a hardware company is also significant when it comes to DaVinci Resolve, because it means it's not a company that's dependent for its survival on getting users to upgrade to paid software. Talking of which, if we click on DaVinci Resolve and Fusion software here, and we scroll down a little bit, we find there are two versions of the package, DaVinci Resolve, which is free, and DaVinci Resolve Studio, which is paid software and costs $295 or £245. So if we click on DaVinci Resolve, and then we scroll down again to uh, get to the download links, if we click on free download now, we get to this page where again I want to stress that if you want the free software you must download DaVinci Resolve 18 on the left and not DaVinci Resolve Studio 18 on the right which would give you a time limited trial of the paid software. DaVinci Resolve Studio 18 does have more features as you would expect but if we select DaVinci Resolve here on the left the program we obtain is a totally free professional video editor with no watermark on the output and no time limits on its usage. So let's click to download and here we'll go for Windows like that and it gets us to this page where we need to enter a few details so I'll get on with that. And I would note I've been filling in this screen to obtain different versions of DaVinci Resolve for many years now and I've never had any problems with spam. You just get occasional messages from Blackmagic Design about the latest versions of their products. So with this filled in, we just go to the bottom of the page and click on register and download, and it gives us a file to save and install, as you can see. And as this works through, it's worth noting that DaVinci Resolve 18 has significant hardware requirements. For example, 16 gigabytes of RAM and at least two gigabytes of GPU RAM are typically advised for HD editing, with a 32 gigabyte, four gigabyte system usually recommended to edit in 4K and to do complex effects. However, as I'm going to demonstrate, by using appropriate settings, it's possible to work on 4K projects on more modest hardware. So here we're using my i5 test rig which has 16 gigabytes of RAM and a two gigabyte graphics card. Anyway, with the file now downloaded, we'll get on with installation, which here in Windows is a very straightforward process. And when it's completed, we can launch our new software. Like previous versions, DaVinci Resolve 18 has a tab-based interface. We have seven tabs here at the base of the screen. So I thought we'd start out with a brief tour of these tabs. Although just before that, I'm going to go up to workspace and full screen window to give us a bit more room. And we're starting here in the edit tab. This is a very standard multi-track video editor, a very nice one. If I press the space bar here, things start to play. It's very strange having an explaining computers video inside an explaining computers video, but you get the basic idea. This is where you do a lot of editing. But projects start out in the media tab over here, where we have at the top left a file browser where we can find assets we want to use in our edit. And then when we've found something we want to use, we can drag it down into the media pool like that, and it becomes available for editing. And here in DaVinci Resolve, we can do editing in two different tabs. It mainly happens here in the Edit tab, but we also have the Cut tab. And here in the Cut tab, you can always see the entire edit across the screen, however big or small it might be. So if I go towards the end of the edit there, we go back to the Edit tab, we've gone towards the end. If I go to the Cut tab again, and we go back the other way, like that, we grab the right place, and we go back to the Edit tab, we've moved around. And you can, as I said, do some of your actual cutting, your actual editing here in the Cut tab. 
although I tend to use this for navigation, it's a great way of moving around inside the edit. Next we have the Fusion tab where you can do all kinds of complicated effects work. This is where DaVinci Resolve starts to really eat up hardware resources, so we'll leave this for now. And then next along we have the Color tab. And it's worth being aware that DaVinci Resolve started life as a color correction application and then they added video editing. And that's why many people who want to really focus on color correction really like using DaVinci Resolve. So for example, I can go down here to Hue and uh, change the control on Oh look, our uh, clip changed its colors. Don't think that's a good idea. I'll press Control Z to get out of that. And here in this tab, we can also add lots of effects, particularly work with things like masks to help us with color correction. It's all node-based, it's all very powerful. The next tab along is the Fairlight tab where we work on audio. You can see the level meters bounding around as we play here. You can load in a free sound effects library when you first install the package. This is for the Jeep metal rattle suspension, which is very exciting as we can see. And again, we can work with lots of effects as you would expect. And then finally, when you want to produce a final movie, you go to deliver, you set up what you want to deliver over here in terms of format and specification, file name, etc. Click on add to render queue. And then if you click on render all, it produces the final film. So that's a very quick overview of the seven tabs in DaVinci Resolve. But I want to show you one more thing before we finish this basic tour. And it brings us back to the issue of the hardware required to run DaVinci Resolve because here we're working on an HD edit. Things are working perfectly well, as you can see, no problems running this on our i5 with 16 gigabytes of RAM. But let's change across to a different edit. Let's go to File here and go to the Project Manager, where I've got a 4K test edit, as you can see. So let's bring that in. There we go. And let's just move across down there in the edit and play this. And you'll see it does play this 4K footage on the i5 system with a 16 gig of RAM, although you can see it's juddering a bit there in terms of the dissolve, and we've got a picture-in-picture picture coming in that wasn't very smooth either. But there are various things we can do about this, and one of them is to go to the Media tab and to go to our Timeline, right-click and go to Timelines and Timeline Settings, and by default our Timeline has the same resolution as our project, which here is a 3840 by 2160 Ultra HD. But if I take off this tick against use project settings, we could change the resolution of our timeline. We could change it, for example, to HD like that. Then we could go back to the edit screen and to go back to the start of the edit and we'll play this. And I'll press Control F to go full screen. And this is going to play much better. Look perfectly smooth dissolve there. Our picture in picture will come in in a second. There it is. Everything's playing much better. And it's worth being aware here, we have got that picture in picture and nothing changed in terms of its position on the screen. If we look at the inspector here, where you set all these things up, you scale things around to do picture in picture. This is where we can move it around. We can change the size of that, as you can see. All that was maintained when we changed the resolution of our timeline. And of course, when we finished here, we can go back to media. And before we actually output the video, we could do one or two things. Firstly, we could go back to timeline setting and click use project settings or we can manually set the timeline resolution to 3840 by 2160 so that our final movie is rendered in UHD. Additional features in DaVinci Resolve 18 may be split into three categories. Firstly, there are several new tools that rely on the DaVinci Neural Engine that's only available in the studio in the paid version of the package. So for example, if we go to the Color tab, we find there's a new Depth Map tool. And what this does is to create a mask to separate the foreground and the background of an image so they can be graded separately. This and other AI tools are the tools that use the DaVinci Neural Engine are amazing, but if I drag this across to our node there to try and apply it to the duck, it shows us quite clearly we have reached a limitation with DaVinci Resolve. We'd have to upgrade to the studio version to use this particular tool. And if I click on the not yet, we will see that there we are. We can't use this tool without purchasing DaVinci Resolve Studio. And as I'm only reviewing here the free version of DaVinci Resolve, I'm not going to cover any of the new tools that require DaVinci Resolve Studio in this video. So I will get rid of that. 
Anyway, secondly, when it comes to new features, DaVinci Resolve 18 offers cloud-based collaboration. And we can see this if we look in the project manager over here like that, where we can see the databases, the library files, which store our projects. We've got one local database here, which is currently storing two projects. And DaVinci Resolve has always allowed collaboration across a local area network, so you could have a project file that was shared between multiple local users. But this has now been taken further because now we can have cloud-based files, online files shared using the new Blackmagic Cloud. And this allows multiple users anywhere in the world to collaborate in real time on the same timeline. So for example, you could have one person doing the editing in a project, someone else doing color grading, and a third person working on the sound. Creating a Blackmagic Cloud ID, which we need to log in here, is free although there is a charge of $5 a month per cloud project. It's also worth noting that only the project library is shared in the cloud, with media being stored locally for each user and synchronized using a service such as Dropbox or Google Drive. Blackmagic Design have also launched a new range of high-speed network drives to store synchronized media files. In addition to the new studio-only and collaboration tools, DaVinci Resolve 18 has various other broader improvements that will be of interest to probably a wider range of users. For example, if you have an M1 Mac, okay, that's a constrained group of users again, but if you do have an M1 Mac, the package is now significantly faster on that hardware. And personally, I've also found that the program launches a lot more quickly here on a PC. So that, just let's have a look at that. That's just a closed DaVinci Resolve. And to do an absolutely fair test, I'll also restart Windows so there's nothing sitting around in a cache. There we are. And in a fast forward there, I also give Windows time to settle. So let's now launch DaVinci Resolve. And as you'll see, There we are. As you can see, that was a very rapid launch for a professional video editor. And even if I go into the file itself, it won't take too long to load everything in. That really is impressive, I think. It has been worth it for me, at least, to upgrade from DaVinci Resolve 17 to 18 to get that increase in launch speed. Over the past few years, DaVinci Resolve has evolved into a really nice video editor. The software just reeks of quality. It's very fluid, it's very stable, it's a joy to use. And a final feature I want to tell you about, which is new here in version 18, is the Blackmagic Proxy Generator. This improves performance on lower end hardware, and indeed on higher end hardware when working with source media with a resolution beyond 4K or in a raw format. As we saw earlier, one way to edit more fluidly on lower end hardware is to decrease the timeline resolution during the editing process. But another option is to edit using proxy files, or in other words, copies of your media with a lower resolution and data rate. DaVinci Resolve has always been able to work with proxies, but the process has been streamlined with a new proxy generator. And this installs alongside DaVinci Resolve as a standalone utility. So if we look in the Windows menu down here and we go to All Applications and Blackmagic Design, there we find the light version of the proxy generator, which we get with DaVinci Resolve, and we'll run it up. And when we do run it up, it first asks us to add a watch folder, which I'm going to ignore because I want to do things in my order. Thank you very much, computer. And here we have the proxy generator, where in the middle we can set the resolution for our proxy files, which can be what it calls half res 1080p, or in other words, 540p, or we can use 1080p with either H.264 or H.265 encoding. And we do need to give this program a folder to work with, and it's going to be this one, over here, a test folder containing some test 2160p, some 4K files. So if we go over here and click on add, and we'll navigate to that folder. There we are, and for proxy demo and select. And if we now click on start, the generator will start to make proxy files for the files here in this media folder. And we can see it started because it's created a subfolder inside the media folder to store the proxy files. And this is now what's called a watch folder, which means if any more files are added to this folder, they'll also get proxy files created by the generator if we leave it running. 
But for now, we'll just let this complete. Here we are. I am going to stop the program and close it down just to be tidy. And we'll now go back into DaVinci Resolve where I'm going to create a new project. And I think we'll call it a proxy demo. Might as well be consistent. There we go. And I'm going to go into a file and set the project settings. So it's going to be a 4K a UHD file rather than my default of a 1080p like a that and if we now go across to the uh, media tab we'll bring in some footage from the folder we were just working with there we are for proxy demo and we'll grab these files pull them down into the media pool and they'll automatically be associated with their proxy files so if we go across now to the edit tab i'm going to go up to playback and here i'm going to go to proxy handling and make sure it's set to prefer proxies so we use proxies here in the edit tab so let's now just set up a very straightforward edit. We'll pull that down like that, make this slightly smaller. We'll have the uh, medium close up going in like that. We'll add the more hem because it'll probably enjoy it quite a bit. And we'll put some uh, long dissolves in because I'll just give us an example of performance when they play. And uh, there we are. And if we now play this through, we should find that using proxies, everything is working okay, nice and smooth. It is working. This is a good example, again, of us being able to edit 4K footage nice and fluidly on lower end hardware here because we're making use of proxies. And a final thing I'd point out is if we go across to the Deliver tab, then here, by default, DaVinci Resolve will make use of original files and not proxy files, so that the final video that gets rendered out is in the maximum quality, which here will be 2160p. Provided that you've got the hardware to run it, DaVinci Resolve is a fantastic free video editor. Here we've been running the latest version in Windows, and it's also very easy to install and use DaVinci Resolve in Mac OS. However, there's also a version of DaVinci Resolve for Linux, although that's a little bit trickier to install and there are some limitations. And so in a few weeks time, we're going to be making another video about DaVinci Resolve 18, but installing it and using it in Linux. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.